That's fucking delightful. Fucking delightful. Fucking good combination playing. Sliding balls into space. Good. Excellent. You have on the fucking roll. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rock and Reform podcast in association with Sunderland Community Soup Kitchen. It's Phil Horston this week after Sunderland restarted the league campaign with a victory over Millwall. It was hard earned, it was hard fought as well, but we ran out 3 0 winners eventually. Uh, very much a game of two halves in terms of the performance from Sunderland, so we're going to talk about that. And to do this, I'm joined by my good friend Craig Chapman. How are you this evening, Craig? Hello, mate. I tell you what, what a weekend it's been for our city, yeah? What a weekend. It's been fantastic. Obviously, Josh Kelly winning in the box and the lasses winning 5 uh, 0 with four goals from Emily Scar. Uh, England getting through with the uh, quarterfinals of the World Cup with a goal from Jordan Henderson and obviously Sunderland winning as well. So, yeah, very much a, a positive weekend for, uh, for those of us of a red and white persuasion. So, obviously, Craig, we started the league campaign again after a three-week uh, layoff because of the World Cup. Obviously, the last game was against Birmingham. We got things going again against Millwall yesterday. First half, um, I think it would be fair to say we looked quite rusty. We didn't fight, find our rhythm right away and obviously Millwall made it very tough with us with their physicality. Was that as a surprise to you or did the first half kind of pan out as you expected it to? Yeah, pretty much exactly as I would, to be fair. I think considering the side haven't really had a competitive game now for what the best part of maybe four and a bit weeks. I know we had the uh, the out in, in Dubai last week, but um, yeah, it, it pretty much was. It was kind of stop-start really after such a, a good performance against Birmingham. The break kind of came at a right time with the expectancy that we would have got injuries back, but unfortunately it kind of hindered us a little bit because we've just come off a great win and you know, you'd really want to build that consistency again by winning um, any any forthcoming fixtures but obviously it didn't quite happen that way we've had the break you're quite right the first half we were fairly rusty positives to be made of course as although Millwall threatened us as you know we kept them at bay and thankfully we'll come through unscathed despite a couple of really hairy moments towards the end of the first half but yeah um, I mean there's the, no major concerns for me from that first half I think obviously the way we came out and performed in the second was certainly the Sunderland side that we've seen in recent weeks but um, yeah like I say certainly certainly no surprise yeah I mean obviously uh, Tony Mowbray shuffled the pack a little bit with his team selection obviously brought Adji Alise back in great to see him back after his injury there off I think he looked quite solid as well also Luke O'Neillend and Gooch came back in did you feel that that was a deliberate kind of move from Mowbray to maybe shore us up give us a bit more physicality in terms of what we you know we knew that Millwall were going to come and try and be a bit of a blunt weapon and try and just kind of basically cut bludgeon their way past us so do you think that was in Tony Mowbray's thinking by bringing the likes of Gooch back into the starting eleven? Yeah, I think so. And I think, obviously, like you mentioned, I think it's a bit of a like a cliche when it comes to Millwall that they are this particular side, they play in this particular fashion. And, and to be fair, it's quite right. For large parts of the first half, they, they did bully us. I mean, it was, it was interesting to see even George Honeyman had, had actually developed a bit of that streak as well. But, yeah. um, you know, in terms of the experienced lads, I think when you've got somebody like 0-9 in there who will literally just put his body on the line for the club and when you've got somebody like Lyndon Gooch as well, you know, those lads in particular, they, they really stood out and... You know, might they have targeted, say, if we had a Huggins in there or a Human there? Obviously, we've, we've got Alex Pritchard in there as well. We've got Corey Evans in there. You know, I think it was very important to have a solid spine in there. You know, you you really need players of that experience. Yeah, tricky first half. Millwall made it difficult for us. But what I liked in the second half is that we came out when it was as if the players had actually worked out that, hey, there's a problem that needs to be solved here. There's no point in letting Millwall continue to drag us into a physical battle because it doesn't suit our way of playing. And once the likes of Alex Pritchard and Ahmad started to get on the ball more and started to make things happen, we started to play, as you said earlier on, what you would class as our natural game. And it really started to yield results in the early stages of the second half, didn't it? So it was good to see the players kind of figuring that out for themselves. Obviously, Mowbray would have given them some words of encouragement at halftime, no doubt. But the players came out with a really good attitude in the second half and it was as if they set themselves here. We know how to solve this problem. We've just got to do it. So that's got to be encouraging, would you say? It, well, first and foremost, let me ask you this. When you went downstairs at half time, if somebody said we were going to win that game 3 0, you never would have believed never it. Never in a million years. I, I, felt that, I felt that it was going to be, I felt that if we were going to win it, it was going to be one of those games where you nick it with a goal that's deflected off of someone's Absolutely. backside. One of those kind of gritty wins mm -hmm. where it's nail biting and, you know, you, you've got to really uh, weather a storm. But you're absolutely right. You know, the, the the response in the second half, as I said, was was absolutely fantastic. And once we started to find that rhythm, once we started to kind of get the ball moving, like I said, Pritchard really started to dictate things. It really yielded results. And obviously the first goal came as a result of some great work from Pritchard. He was really he marauded down the flank, managed to cross it. Uh, Sims from where I was sitting Sims seemed to kind of try and back heel it or he seemed to try and flick it I couldn't quite work out what, what he was doing but then it obviously comes to Ahmad um, his second goal in two games yeah I mean look that, that finish 
you know, it, it, granted, it it wasn't anything special if we kind of compare it to the the goal that he scored against Birmingham, but it was it was equally as important. Obviously, he missed a, a big chance in the first half, and um, I think what this what this team has in, in a massive massive quantity is they've just got so much spirit, so much character. You think that if chances go astray, that the heads go down, and and you just do not see it. We came out with a real aggression. And you talk about Alex Pritchard in particular. There's somebody perhaps he got a little bit fortunate with the way that the ball pinged off uh, off one of their defenders to help him break down the line. But you know he played such a massive part in that second half. And and Ella Sims as well. Like I say, that flick comes off. It looks absolutely outstanding for an assist. And um, and yeah, you've got Ahmad who's instinctively he's he's always getting in the right positions, isn't he? So that's perhaps indicative of basically the form he's in, the confidence that he's got at the moment as well. And I tell you what, it's, it's really coming together for him in particular. And um, you, you kind of do the thing again, don't you? You sign a player on loan and you say, oh, here we are. I don't want to fall in love with a loan player again. And um, yeah, we're not even halfway through the season yet. And I think we're all devastated knowing that there's probably not a chance of ever signing him on a permanent deal because he's, he's the real yeah. deal. He's, yeah. he's so, so good. And when he turns it on, he's, he's in my opinion, at least, I don't think there's there's anybody I've seen so far who's better than him in his position in this division. I think it's brilliant. I mean, he is, he is definitely starting to show, you know, flashes of the form that persuaded Manchester United to pay such a big free from when they initially signed him. Yeah. And we've got to remember as well with Ahmad that he's still very, very young and he's still kind of finding his way within the professional game. He obviously was at Rangers. It didn't quite happen for him there. He's come to Sunderland. He's been given a chance and he's really taken it. And I think that's really encouraging. Um, so obviously we get the goal. We make the breakthrough. And then we do what we always want Sunderland to do, which is to get another goal. Pretty much immediately after that. Again, this one comes from Pritchard. Good finish, good crisp strike. Keep a uh, slightly suspect for you, because obviously I haven't seen it on the replays. I think the keeper could probably do a little bit better in that situation. He seemed to be kind of caught off balance a little bit. But here, you know, Pritchard had the confidence to take the shot on and he was rewarded with it, wasn't he? Yeah, I, I mean, Gary Rowers suggested that um, that Millwall kind of gifted us the goals, didn't he? And, yeah. And... Um, I mean, you know, I'm not sure if it's if it's just the goalkeeper seeing that just a little bit too late because he he skips by his man, and then he goes past another man, and, and ordinarily you think you know perhaps he's held onto it too long, get your shot away. But I think it really helped that that one of their central defenders was was stood in there, in the way. And yeah, he's, I mean, he's he's, he's got his uh, touch on it. There wasn't a great deal of pace behind it, but you know, I, I think his his hard work certainly paid off there. Just touching before that, sorry. Obviously, in between, like I say, obviously it's 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 great that we we managed to capitalise and we scored another goal in quick succession. But um, I think obviously when they went forward just after we scored the first goal, George Honeyman puts a ball in. I, I can't remember. I think it was Bradshaw who got the header. But you know, I think a lot of credit for Dan Neal for clearing that one off the line because yes. you know if they if they put one away, then then you know it could have been a different game. But like I say, I think. I think the confidence breeds in our team at the moment. When we score a goal, you know, everybody gets the tails up and um, everybody knows the job. But I think, like I say, in respect to the second one, if, if somebody's deserved a goal for, for hard work and patience and persistence, it's certainly certainly Alex Pritchard. And, you know, we've seen this season, Craig, haven't we, where Sunderland have got themselves into a 2-0 lead against Burnley and against QPR. We've kind of mm-hmm. maybe frozen a little bit. Our game management hasn't been as, as good as it could be and we've not quite been able to figure out how to see the result out. But yesterday was an exception to that, wasn't it? And I thought the composure we showed, you know, as the game started to head towards its final stages, and I think this was probably epitomised by Danny Bart, who I'm sure you'd agree with me, has been absolutely outstanding oh, this season. Unbelievable. You know, um, unbelievable. And if you, th- you know, I think back to, you know, over recent years, how many how many transfer windows have come and gone when we've all been crying out for a big, strap and no nonsense centre half who can just lead, mm-hmm. who can organise, cajole, encourage his teammates, and who can do the nuts and bolts of the game really, really well. And he in 09 in what is kind of a makeshift partnership, if you like, in central defence, have been absolutely outstanding, haven't they? And I think this, you know, yesterday, a lot of our composure in the final stages of the game really came from them. I thought they were absolutely fantastic, weren't they? The thing, the thing with Danny, Danny Bartory, in, in terms of when he when he made his debut for us, uh, I think it was Portsmouth, the, the yeah. game that we, we won one nil, Lee Johnson's last win. We, we'd done a pod thereafter, and I remember saying like instantly reminded me a little bit of Paul Butler. That's exactly and then the what irony was, earlier on. Yeah. Yeah, the irony was we went to Bolton the next week, he scored no goal, and I went, oh, well, he's went from Paul Butler to Paul McShane. But I tell you what, ever <laughs> since then, yeah. he's he's went from strength to strength. And to think, here's a player who we didn't pay a fee for. He reduced his wages to join the football club. 
you know, you don't get deals like that very often. And I know Speakman and and Stuart Harvey, you know, there's there's a lot of eyes perhaps casting doubt on on some of the business and things like that. We we can highlight some of the the great players that brought in your Stewarts and 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 others, but I mean I I'd perhaps go a little bit overboard with it, but I I honestly think that Danny Bart's probably the best central defensive player that we've had since since we were in the Premier League. I'd I'd argue that that final season he would have gotten that Premier League team, no doubt about it, in terms of some of the rubbish that we've had since then. But he yeah. is unbelievable. He's so calm. He's composed. I, I, the, honest to God, there's not enough words that you could actually throw at him for just just literally just standing like a brick wall uh, for the amount of balls they put in the box as well. Which you know Sunderland are often quite cheeky with at times, and he literally put himself in front of everything. You mentioned Luke nine by the way, as well. Again, it, it, he will literally do anything you ask. He will play every single position. He, here's a lad who was signed as an attacker midfielder. He's played everywhere for us, and. I mean, like I say, you talk about people putting the body on the line, he'll do it all for you. So it is, to be fair, if you said that was going to be our, our partnership at the start of the season, I mean, I would have I would have laughed at you. But at the moment, you think you talked at, obviously earlier on about, you know, Dan Ballard coming back in and stuff like that. But who who's going to take their spot at the moment? You know, it, it yeah. really is one of them where they, they're going to have to drop a massive clangor to come out of this side. Obviously, Bailey Wright recently got in. I know he's been away at the World Cup as well, but I mean, that's their positions at the moment. And if you're coming up against a big physical side like Millwall, and they, I mean, they went to Preston the other week and they won 4-2 there. And we've come away with that unscathed. And I mean, like I say, to be fair, we could wax lyrical about these two all night. They've struck up some real good partnership. They've got a, a tremendous understanding with one another. And, you know, what long may it continue? Because like I say... <laughs> We're, honest to God, we could be on all night. We could be on all night talking about how good they were. I mean, I think the thing that I really like about Bart as well, he's a defender who clearly relishes defending. You know, he's got that kind of old oh, school yeah. approach to defend. You mm-hmm. know, he takes pride in every header he wins. He, he gets himself pumped up when he makes a good tackle. And he's always cajoling his teammates. And I think that leadership, as you said, we got him for nothing and he cut his wages to come here, which shows that really shows his attitude and his motivation. And he's come here and he's started. And, you know, even last year during the playoff run, he's been absolutely fantastic. And as you said... When we have a when we can call upon a fully fit squad, particularly in defence, Tony Mowbray is going to have some massive selection decisions to make because we all know how highly rated Dan Ballard is. I mean, he's a former Arsenal FA Cup youth team uh, winning uh, skipper as well. You know, he, he's a really really good player. We've obviously got Adji Elise here, Dennis Serkin as well. It's going to be a great problem for Tony Mowbray to have. And yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Craig. You know that Bart is easily, in my opinion, the best defensive player we've had since the Premier League days. So at two 0 um, obviously we're seeing the game out and everything. You know, there's one or two hairy moments aside, and then Ella Sims gets the goal that I think his efforts uh, merited on Saturday. Yeah, the long ball from um, Anthony Patterson, and obviously George Long in the uh, Millwall goal comes out. He on rushes, Sims reads it, he nicks it past him, and he slots it into the empty net. What I wanted to ask you about um, Sims, Craig, is that we all know how big a player Ross Stewart is for us and we all know how central he is to our style of play. And Sims has got a bit... His approach is slightly different on the pitch. He's got a maybe slightly more laid-back playing style. His, his work rate isn't maybe as good as Ross Stewart's is, but he knows where the goal is. And I think in recent games, he scored against Birmingham and he scored yesterday. He's starting to show his worth, isn't he? And I think second half yeah. of the season... He could be a really good player for us. He's, um, I think, I just to be honest with you, I think he's a very, very clever footballer. And I know people perhaps look and they think, right, maybe why aren't you running? Why aren't you breaking a pace here? Why aren't you doing this, that, and the other? Because that is just not his game. Ultimately, what we want him to do is just put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. Maybe a little bit fortunate, obviously, with the defensive clangor. Um, in terms of obviously when the the long ball came over, but still got an awful lot to do there. And you know, his composure in front of goal. Christ, we've seen strikers in recent years go past a keeper and, and and obviously nothing's come off. Don't want to throw the bus on um, at Will Grigg there, but so be it. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, like I say, obviously there's a lot of work to do. He skipped by the, the goalkeeper and and like I say, it's it's just as, as calm and cool a finish as you like. But we're talking about Sunderland being a young side and stuff like that. It's it's very easy to forget that here's another young lad as well. He's, what, 21-year-old? Yeah. And, you know, we're asking him to do a big, big job at the moment, holding the line. And, yeah, like like you say, obviously, he's, he's, he's ultimately he's got his rewards. He's really, really committing himself to the cause at the moment. And, like I say, look, you know, you can read things where people say he's not interested, he doesn't smile when he scores and stuff like that. But, come on, who cares? Yeah. As long as, he, as, long as he's scoring goals for us, 
who cares, you know? And um, and like you say, he, he's he's starting to really kind of flesh out now and show us what he's capable of. He scores all types of goals. I mean, when Ross Stewart comes back in, is it going to be a two? Who knows? Because again, we'll talk about who's going to come out. Nobody's going to replace Ahmad Diallo up there either at the moment, either are they? So like you say, it's um, it's a nice problem to have. Lots of selection headaches at the moment, but just long may it continue. Yeah, so obviously 3-0 win, clean sheet as well, which which no doubt would have pleased Tony Mowbray. And that's put us back into 10th position. Uh, we're only a point off the playoffs now um, after 21 games. We're entering the kind of the festive schedule now. We've got West Brom uh, next week. And, you know, just looking at the games we've got coming up, a lot of them are against teams kind of in the lower reaches of the table. Do you see this kind of Christmas period as a real chance for us to start making some headway maybe towards a promote, a playoff push? I mean, where where do you think our kind of ceiling is this season? Do you think it could it could be playoffs or do you think it could be even more than that with some good additions in January? How do you see it panning out at this stage? If you ask if you asked me a couple of months ago where I you know would be happy with, where I'd be content with, I remember walking out of Wembley saying that just as long as we're not in trouble, you know, if somebody offered me twenty first then I would have took it then. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you, I, I certainly did not expect us to perform the, the way that we have so far this season. Granted, you know, there's been a couple of frustrating games in there where we've dropped points in terms of some of the performances at home that have not been, you know, t- typical of, of what we've done in recent years. But, um, you know, if we can really fine-tune that, like we did against Millwall, you're going to have sides who are going to come to the Stadium of Light, they're going to try and sneak a goal, they're going to try and bully us, they're going to try and kill time. But what you need is a bit of experience. You need calm heads, and and that's that's essentially what we've done to win that game. You know, we 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 didn't let them get to us. At the moment, I mean, there's there's a lot of talk, isn't there, about where we can go? I, it's so hard to call. Honestly, it is because we're we're a couple of points, like you say, away from even automatic positions, and you're maybe five points above the drop zone as well. And and that's just it's the nature of this league. Yeah, and. I would never ever tell anybody, you know, not to get too high with the highs, of course, because we've had some turgid years. So absolutely, you should be walking out of the stadium like beaming from ear to ear after winning these games. The idea of them saying, you know, consolidation and they'll determine, obviously, you know, when we're in a position for promotion. I guess the reality is it's what we do in January, because if we can get through that month without having any business with Ross Stewart, if we can try and bring in some extra bodies, then there is absolutely no reason why we can't at least be competing for the playoffs because we've played almost everybody now. And yeah, there's been a couple of really standout teams against us. The Burnleys, Norwich were okay in terms of their defensive work. But I honestly think we're as good as anybody. I really do. So, I mean, look, ask us for a prediction now. I'd probably say I'll, I'll be happy with 10th. I, I expect us to perhaps be in and around where we are now. But if the club, and I don't necessarily want to say if they have the ambition, because I think that would be unfair. They've clearly got the ambition yeah. in terms of the way that we've, we've brought in all of these these you know youthful signings who've got such a tremendous career ahead of them, hopefully all at Sunderland, of course. But I think if we strike right in January, there is no reason why we can't be knocking on that door. Try and get through the next fixtures because, you know, West Brom, funny side, down the bottom, they should be doing a hell of a lot better. You've got to try and win that game. Go to Hull again, funny side, but if if you want to do well in this division, you've got to beat the teams around you, yeah. you know. And and I, I think that we're, we're capable of going and grinding out results. So we just need to keep ticking over. Hopefully we can get some extra bodies back in. Ballard shouldn't be too far away. Stewart as well. But like I say, it's a great problem to have. I mean, we, we haven't even mentioned the likes of Patrick Roberts and, and others. We've got Dewey to come back from the World Cup. We've got yeah. Bailey Wright to come back. So it, it, it's a bit of an embarrassment of riches because we've got some tremendous talent and they, they can't even get in. We've got Jamie Tete, who's performed okay this Michu season. as well. You know, Edward Mishu. Abdullah Bar. Yeah. We, we could, honestly, we could be on all evening talking about the players that we've got to come in. But what they've got to do is they've just got to they've got to grasp that opportunity when it comes because at the moment they're not going to get the chance because the lads who are performing you, you can't get them out the side and I've been long winded with this I guess I'm just I'm honestly I'm I'm not happy I'm not buoyant with just just how well we're doing at the moment but I, I tell you what like I say they, they've all had the doubters you know Speakman Kirill Stuart Harvey but I tell you what if you lay down you know on a piece of paper what they come into. In, in terms of where we are now, what they've delivered for us so far, it's night and day. Yeah. And like I say, I can't praise them enough because, 
you go back this time last year, I, I, I couldn't have seen this. I think you go back a couple of months ago, I couldn't have seen this when we lost Alex Neal as well. But it's been good. We just need to try and get through the next couple of fixtures, get into January. Hopefully, like I say, we can bring in bring in some players. Wouldn't surprise me to see a few buddies go as well, but anybody's guess where, where we finish. But I think if we have a good window, you know, we'll, Perhaps, perhaps we might be booking Wembley hotels. Again. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But yeah, I mean, just to pick up on a point you made there, Craig, I think it is it is correct. You know, this is a very open league, and we've been a match for pretty much anyone on our day. When we've been able to, you know, field a fully fit squad, when we've been on our game, you know, against Burnley, for example, okay, it was a game that ultimately got away from us, but we showed in yeah. that game in the first half that we can compete. And I think for me, what's most encouraging is the fact that the lads who were central to that promotion challenge last season, the likes of Luke O'Neill, the likes of Danny Bart and Alex Pritchard and so on and so forth, they have shown now that they've got the ability to step up into the championship and to really Absolutely. make an impact at this level. You know, there was the narrative over the summer that this team was only good enough for 5th in League 1. Well, at the moment, they're only good enough for 10th in the championship. And after the number of games we've played yeah. and some of the injury problems we've had to deal with, I think that you know, I think it's, it's, it's a more than justified return. And you also have to bear in mind as well, We've already surpassed our win record from the last championship season of 2017-18. Right, yep. So that's another ghost that we've that we've put to rest. And the other thing as well is there are games that have we've left points on the table through, you know, mistakes that we're hopefully now learning from. So I think it all points to, you know, to an encouraging second half of the of the season. Well, yeah. um, we'll wrap it up there. Um, thanks for joining us, Craig. Always, always a pleasure to talk to you. RokerReport.spnation.com will have plenty of post-match follow. We've also launched our annual soup kitchen appeal as well. Um, all the details of that can be found on our Twitter page and on our website. So anything you can donate to that really does help them. We know it's a tough time of year for everybody, but all donations are gratefully received. And stick with us, because we'll have more material coming up between now and the West Brom game. So thank you very much for listening, and catch you later. Well, I'm a golden idol, no. Well, I'm a hidden knight, searching all and always I am on my way.